Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome for now to the final G.I. Joe Classified unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Uh, I hope you've been following along all week as I've been opening these new G.I. Joe figures up. If you haven't, go back and watch those, and I get into a lot more detail about the packaging, about what we have on the back here, and what we don't have which would be a file card or a bio of any kind. Instead, we have these symbols on the side. I love the way that the window panel extends over to cover these symbols that are part of the interior packaging. And apparently you can go to gijoe.hasbro.com to find out exactly what these symbols mean and a little bit more about all of these characters. Uh, I apologize, I got a little blurry for a second. It does not want to focus on Scarlet's symbols for some reason. All right. That's okay, though, because we're going to focus on the figure. Uh, once again, some really awesome, unique art going on on the side. Each character has a slightly different art style, which I think is cool because it's giving a lot of different artists the opportunity to work on G.I. Joe. And then on the side here, you can see Scarlet in action. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, I think this might be... Scarlet, like this is maybe her history a little bit because we've got, we know she's into mar or is a martial art into martial arts. That makes her sound like Joe Rogan or something. You know, she is a martial artist. Uh, she served in the military and now she serves in GI Joe. Uh, and then down here we've got her, you know, riding in from the sky, booting an alley Viper right in the face. I love these panels. These side panels have been so cool, but it's been different the way that they've worked. Uh, Destro was just an extension of what was over here. Uh, the rest of them have maybe a little more story, and I've got to say, I think Scarlet has the most comprehensive story yet. And I also hadn't noticed if the other ones have this red, white, and blue stripe up here at the top. Uh, but, very cool. I like this. Hers is probably my favorite package so far. Now, you can see... A uh, little dinged up here. That's because I ordered it from Amazon and they sent it in a bubble envelope because uh, Amazon does not understand how to ship toys. But it doesn't matter to me because right now I'm going to take my trusty 1964 box cutter, slice right through that tape, and open this box up so we can take a look at this stupid piece of paper. Okay. Sorry piece of paper is driving me crazy. Let's get her accessories out first. I'm seeing a, 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 I find your lack of paint disturbing. And you know, you guys will notice if you watch all of these videos here, I, I tend to be positive. I tend to look for things I like about these. Uh, if I have a critique, it's because it's something that that really is uh, actually wrong and not just a personal thing. Ooh, wow, look at that cool backpack. Uh, you know, I try not to be nitpicky. I try to be realistic within what the line is doing. So if they're missing a paint app, then I consider that a problem, or if it's sloppy. But if the figure design is just maybe not the way I would have done it, I'm not necessarily going to criticize that as much because that's not what I'm here to do. Uh, all right. Wow. This is a striking figure. Very, very cool. Uh, incorporating designs of the original Scarlet, the, the yellow coloring, the, I believe this is kind of a drab green right here with these cool red uh, highlights on the side. Not sure how I feel about, I don't know if you can see it very well or not. There's a weird kind of shiny part here in the red I, that there's a a bit of gloss and like a dent whereas the rest of it's a flat red i don't know that's a little weird not terrible not terrible it's a production thing uh and then over here we've got the deco not quite going up into the joint i i am i had some issues with duke on this front and i gotta tell you that's that's an issue that hasbro needs to get on with their qc because these figures at first glance, look so perfect and so complex and well-designed, but then you get up close and there are little flaws, and it's disappointing to see that. Uh, face sculpt. Let's take a look at the character. Very cool. She's got uh, nice high cheekbones. Look, they didn't overdo the lip gloss on her. 
she is ready for battle. She doesn't have like bright red lips, but she does have a, a little paint hit right there to bring those out. Look at the eyes and the eyebrows. Absolutely incredible paint job going on right here. I really like it. And then plus in her hair, we've got these cool highlights going on and this finely sculpted hair. Um, there's a little glossy spot there as well. I think this might actually be the plasticine or something right here. The, that whatever it is they use to release the plastic from the, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but I think maybe that'll clean up a little bit. But on the back here, uh, we've got the hair tie painted in pretty nicely too. Uh, more highlights right here. Uh, just really cool. Great looking hair. Uh, she's got earrings in, but they're sort of practical. <laughs> Those might even be like spacers. Who knows in this day and age? Uh, but they're not like hoops or anything like that. And then her armor, I like right here, we have... Oh, interesting. Okay, so wait. Do we have the butterfly joint that the other figures had? Yes, there is. You can kind of see it right there. That butterfly joint is present. Very cool. And then we've got the one shoulder pad. And I'm trying to figure out... Again, that red seems to be a little hard for them to hit. You can see where it doesn't come all the way down to the border of this, but up here it kind of bleeds over a little bit. Uh, you know, on the shelf, it's not going to matter to me. Up close, I can't help but notice something like that. Uh, she's got her cool forearm gauntlets going on here with the, the metallic color inside and her signature yellow out with that blue that's been used throughout this first wave right there. I love it. I love that unifying element. Uh, cool shuriken on the outside right there. And then the glove itself, it's got some cool armored knuckles up here. Sculpted details, very nice. Uh, and then the other gauntlet, let's see. She does have two elbow pads, unlike Duke. Looks cool. And then right here. Uh, another little nod to the original. She's got this weird red piece on her shoulder that I, I was honestly never quite sure what that was supposed to be. But there it is. And another one of these little blue emblem deals that are some kind of like energy signature or something. Uh, she's got a cool... Let's, let's go ahead and be grown-ups for a minute and admit that it's great that she does not have like single sculpted giganto boobs. She's got a cool chest plate that is reasonable female armor. I love that. She looks, she looks like she is ready for action. Very cool. She's got this uh, belt, separate sculpt. Got a little pouch on the side. Look at this detail on these pouches. Three zippers, three zipper pulls right here. Maybe a paint hit would have been nice, but at the same time, maybe these would have black zippers because, well... Okay, let's be realistic. She's not trying to be subtle on the battlefield. Uh, but still, they look very cool. A uh, little painted buckle on there. Looks nice. Um, we've got same ratcheting ankles as the other figures. Same ratcheting double jointed knee. And then these cool shin guards that to me work, or I guess look better on her than they do on some of the other figures. I really, really love this sort of mustard yellow color that's, a, you know, her signature from that original figure mixed with this uh, bronzish gold color that's on the rest of the figures, or at least the metallic color is. Overall, looks absolutely great. Tons of detail, tons of sculpt. You can see on her shirt here, we've got some uh, sculpted in spots of, you know, possibly body armor, soft body armor under there, who knows. Uh, but it looks cool. It draws the eye uh, and makes the figure, you know, it gives it a lot of character, a lot of personality. Now, as far as accessories go, oh, wait, I totally skipped over her bandolier. We've got a sheath on the front here with a little red paint hit. Looks nice. And then on the back, we have got bolts for her crossbow and more storage for knives. I love that they've given her like plentiful knives. Very, very cool. But you can see here where the knife sheaths kind of work into this backpack piece. This is a cool design. And I like the idea that she reaches behind and under 
to grab a bolt rather than over her shoulder. I think that's kind of cool. I dig that. And honestly, I wonder if you could flip this thing around. Yeah, I'm sure you could to have it go the other way. Let's, uh, let's just do that real quick and see what it looks like. Oh, I didn't think the ponytail through. Oh my gosh, this little hook on the ponytail is going to be the end of my life. All right, there we go. Oh, wait, I just did that totally wrong because I turned her head around backwards. All right, well, <laughs> thanks for watching me completely screw up that operation here on YouTube. We'll just spin that right back around and assume that I can flip that over uh, when I'm not filming and worried too much about how much time everything is taking. Uh, so let's take a look at these accessories and see how much success Hasbro had updating her. Oh, now this is entry. Whoa. Okay. This is cool. I didn't even notice this when I pulled it out. Okay. What's not cool is that gun is bent a little bit, but whatever, we can heat that up and fix that. So she comes with what basically works as a pistol on its own with no paint on it, but then you take this piece and figure out how to attach it. Oh, look at that. Very cool. And you've got her crossbow, which I'm honestly a little surprised that this isn't just some kind of like plasma weapon, which is what the rest of the characters seem to have. And I got to say, if this was a gunmetal color with some of those blue paint hits up here, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll find out more details about this kind of stuff as, as the line goes on, as information comes out. But just on its own, as a new kind of updated cool crossbow for Scarlet, I like it. It works. Fits right in the hand there. We've got uh, trigger guard. Open trigger guard with a finger sculpted to go right in it. It fits. That's going to get annoying after a while. All right. There we go. Click that right back in there. It would be nice if there was storage for this for these parts somewhere, but, but whatever. Let's not get greedy. Uh, and then we have three different knives. We've got sort of a standard knife right here. Uh, no paint. A little cheap, but it's a knife, whatever. And there are... There are entirely black knives in the world. That is a thing. It's not like that's crazy. That fits right into the bandolier on the front there. And then we've got these two, like, a little more serious combat knives looking kind of brutal right there that are actually... Okay, yeah. So these two knives, and they go up here right in so she is ready to get into battle and kick some cobra butt i really like this design i think she's in a weird way the most updated but also in a weird way the most successful and reasonably updated, I guess. I, I don't know. It's, it's obviously Scarlet. Any GI Joe fan can look at this figure and immediately recognize this is Scarlet. Uh, but she is also vastly different from the original figure. Although we have seen Scarlet's that look similar to this, uh, throughout the years on the line. And that's an important thing to remember as we look at these classified figures is that there have been many many, many character updates over the years. And I think to overreact to any of them is a little ridiculous and is to forget what G.I. Joe is and how this line has managed to stay vital for so many years. And right now, we're going to take a second at how Scarlet measures up uh, to other popular six-inch action figure lines that are out there right now. So I can't pick a favorite. Out of this first wave of figures, I think they all have 
met a, a degree of success that I didn't necessarily expect when I first saw them. I think they're all great updates on the shelf together. They look like a fighting team. They look like a unit. They look great. Uh, I think Hasbro's done an amazing job, and I can't dis- uh, I can't wait to see what else they have in store for us. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. Remember to tune in to the Needless Things podcast each and every Friday. And on June 29th, please do check out Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast where we will look at the past, present, and future of the G.I. Joe line. Thanks a lot, you guys.